it's not that suffering is good. Suffering is inbuilt into the universe. You're going to have it just like you have pleasure. It's your unwillingness, unwhol unwholesome unwillingness to deal with it and to accept it for what it is, which is like the, the sword saying, I don't want to go through the fire of the blacksmith. Well, then you're not a sword, period. Now, countries go through these great cycles. The seasons go through it, and so do the psyche. In psychological terms, though, Pluto, Shiva, represents what is known in consciousness as the shadow self. Now, you see, in the schemata of the consciousness, we're out here. We're out here in the realm of persona, which is the word for mask. We're out here in the Hollywood drama, right? The mask, the show of masks. And we become so identified with this extreme edge of consciousness, the fashions, what are we going to look like, you know, the appearances and the whole nine yards. Now, of course, a certain amount of uh, persona we need. Otherwise, we'll be wide open to attack. You need the mask in order to conceal your real identity, to protect yourself in generally, and to operate in the world with other fellow human beings. But we have way overcompensated for it. We've put all our psychic energy into the, the mask. And you don't have to look at the cos cosmetic commercials to know that it's obsessive right now. Behind that is the ego, the waking consciousness. And this little battery runs down every 12 hours or so, so you need to sleep. That's because it's finite and it's an energy and you need to sleep to restore its energy. When we wake up in the morning, we have a thing called ego consciousness, ego waking consciousness. But the ego is a strange kind of thing. As I said, it's kind of young and reckless and wild, as well as very domineering. And anything that your ego or you do not like about yourself, you repress. And the repressions of all the stuff that you despise about yourselves becomes what's known as the shadow personality. And it's kind of in the unconscious realm. It's not even in the conscious realm because you, you're not aware of it. It's like the director's cut of your life. See, when you're living your life and experiencing all sorts of things, you want to have the nice clips that you cut out and put them on the coffee table, the family album. But what about the backstory that's really been filmed, that footage that you hide away, that one day when you leave this planet is going to be played for you in the dark room? They're going to say, come this way. We've got something to show you. Remember all that film you stored away in the attic, meaning your unconscious mind? We're going to run you an amazing film here. This is a real slasher horror one. This is Stephen King and more. You want to see the John Carpenter, you know, Friday the 13th, part 14? Here it is. The shadow is the repressed stuff that we don't show to the world, and we even forget. Now, for those who find it hard to understand what repression is, it's forgetting something and then forgetting that you forgot about it. It's the skeletons in the closet. And again, it's a very necessary part of the human mind. We need it to survive. It's like the dumpster. You need to throw the trash out. But we've, again, overcompensated. We're doing it too much. And it causes enormous psychic problems. Carl Jung said that the shadow is a moral problem that challenges the whole ego personality. For no one can become conscious of the shadow without considerable moral effort. He's talking spiritually there. He's saying that for you to be integrated, you're going to need to integrate with your shadow because those are aspects of yourself that you've thrown away. And you're not getting to the light. See, the self, the true person, is way back here. For the hell, you can forget about the self. We're into ego world. And the ego is doing itself a disservice by constantly denying aspects of its own self. Now, you know something? There was books left out of the Bible, and it's important to start finding out why. Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, this is one of the great Gnostic Gospels that was thrown away, when you see your likeness, you rejoice. But when you see your images which come into existence before you, which neither die nor are made manifest, how much will you bear? Now, it's very flowery language, a different language, but can you see now what is being said here? When you see your likeness, you rejoice. Meaning when you're in the persona and you're in the world of, oh, I play the fashion game and everybody then gives me acknowledgement and I give acknowledgement, you rejoice. But when you see the primordial images which come into existence before you, but with these which are neither die or are made manifest, meaning the unconscious mind, how much then will you bear? It's an old story. And the teacher, remember, the threat. You know what the teacher does? He goes, project on me. I'm your you, come on, dump it on me. And we do. And the teacher's job is to take all of that. As Carlos Castaneda and other writers have shown. The teacher is, on, he's the guy we're going to bury in the sand, as we've done so many times before. The shadow is very powerful. It is a moral problem. It destroys relationships, and it destroys the teacher relationship with the one who's receiving the teaching. Yeah? 
Looking at who we are, it's all it's about. The only solution, is the solution is to look at who we are. As Alexander Pope said, know then thyself. Presume not God the scan, the proper study of man is man. William Blake said, thine own humanity learn to adore. But Carl Jung put it this way. He said, look, people will do anything, no matter how absurd, to stop from facing their souls. Ever been outside recently? Ever turned on the TV recently? He's, he's, he's exactly right. People will do anything, no matter how absurd. And all that carnival that you see out there and all the distraction and nonsense that, that this world is wall to wall full of, that's what he's talking about. I must live in the Bahamas. I must live in a one season world. I don't want to be looking at any of that stuff. Well then, okay. But then you've just condemned the world to horrors. You're just making a person in your life, your partner or your children, the victims, the slaves to your inability to, to face yourself. You're now having a person fill your void and your emptiness because you're not a whole person. And now you've enslaved that wife or that husband or that child or that animal or your workmates to your own form of tyranny. Yeah, you can't call the police on it and you'll never get the court over it to prove that it's there, but it's there. And basically, repression doesn't work. There's a thing known as the return of the repressed. You can only dump so much of it before the stench starts to you know, come back. And as Carl Jung said in a well-known statement, he said, when an inner situation is not made conscious, it appears outside of you as fate. Ha, ha, ha. Because there's a strange contract between the unconscious energy of our minds and the world, the energy that built the world. They conspire together. They're built out of the same stuff. So behind the back of the ego, the unconscious mind, the shadow, conspires with life, with material existence, to bring in front of you the very people the very person, the very challenges, right? To help you integrate when you won't do it of your own free will. And we call that living. All the stuff that happens around us that we often describe as difficult challenges, that's what that is. We will refuse to do the homework, so then we're going to meet it in space and time. As the Greeks said, your character is your fate. 